destroy us. There's no other storm left that can ruin our lives or destroy us completely. Storms may hurt us. They may cause us angst and worry and pain and uncertainty and loneliness, but they will not destroy us. Jesus has, has destroyed that storm for us. And because Jesus has calmed the storm of God's justice, we can trust him in the other storms that come our way. Right? The disciples, when they see the power of Jesus to calm the storm, they react with a great fear. Because they know that Jesus is going to allow them to face these great and terrible storms. How can they trust them? Well, John, in his letter to the churches, he says that the cure, the antidote for fear, for the fear the disciples experience, the fear we may have, the uncertainty of trusting in Jesus, the antidote for that fear is perfect love. Perfect love. What is that love? It's the love of the cross, isn't it? It's the love that lays down its life for another. It's that perfect love and knowing and saying, well, let me say it this way. When we cry out to Jesus, you don't care about what's happening to us. Jesus answers that with the cross. He says, you have no idea how much I do care for you and how much I do love you and the lengths that I will go through to save your life and to preserve you. That's the perfect love that gives us the assurance and the security to not be afraid, to trust in him wholly and completely. Jesus answers our uncertainty and our fear with the cross. Now some of you know the story of a man named Horatio Spafford. His name is probably not familiar. You may know the story anyways, or at least, well, Horatio Spafford and his family lived in the United States, but they decided to move back to England in about the 19th century. And uh, Horatio Spafford himself had some work he needed to do yet in the United States. And so he sent his family on ahead of them to find a home and get settled in and that sort of thing. While they're sailing, the family, they get close to the coast of England, and a storm comes up, one of these major, massive, life-threatening storms, and in fact, the boat is coming to pieces, and the last memory that Mrs. Spafford had of the storm was watching as her children were swept away from her, and her children all drowned. She alone survived, and she got back into England, and she sent a telegram to her husband and said, I alone survived, just me, the rest were lost. Now, Horatio Spafford immediately got on the next boat to be with his wife and to grieve the loss of their children, and uh, as they're sailing, the captain of that ship then, at one point, called to Horatio Spafford and said, I want you to come up here, stand on the deck. The captain said, this is about the place where your family was lost. This is where that storm came up that took the lives of your children. And so that was a grieving experience for him, a painful experience. And after he stood on the deck where his family had been taken from him, he went back to his little stateroom on the boat, and he wrote a song. A song we're going to sing, actually, in just a couple minutes. And this is one of the lines from that song. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance be mine, that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood That's the hope that we have. That's how we can be convinced that God will never leave us because he shed his blood for us. And we're coming to the Lord's table in just a few moments. And one of the purposes, one of the reasons we gather at the table is to have our faith strengthened by these promises. By the promise that God is always with us. The promise that God has paid the ultimate price to be with us, to be present with us. Now as you come to this table this morning, would you reflect on that? Would you remember those promises that are sealed to us, that his body and his blood were broken and shed out so that we can know and be convinced that Jesus will never leave us and will never forsake us? That's how we can trust God in the midst of Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you with faith that constantly needs to be reassured and strengthened. Faith that needs to be built up. 
into full and complete trust of your gospel promises. And so, Lord, we ask that you would do that now as we prepare to gather at your table. Use this to remind us of your promises, your love, the perfect love that drives out all fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.